Hi guys, this is Carol again, and this is part two of animal cells of the cell chapter. So we're starting out with the, what an animal cell looks like, and this is a picture of one here. And um, we've talked about them being eukaryotic before, and also they have membrane-bound organelles. So uh, if you follow my cursor here, these are all the different or little organs. An organelle is a little organ. All the little organs that make part of a cell. And I'm going to have you looking those up. But first I wanted to compare this animal cell with what a plant cell would look like. So in a plant cell um, there are some differences because photosynthesis is going on in a plant cell. So the first thing is that there's a wall. We have a cell membrane in our cells. As you see down here, this is sort of a double layer. It has not only the cell membrane, but also a cell wall. The cell wall is what we call fiber. That's why they tell you to eat fiber, because you need to eat cell walls, because we don't digest them. I call them the roto-rooter of our system, of our digestive system, because they go in one end and out the other. And that is what a cell wall is. Other than that, these little green elliptical spheres here are chloroplasts, and that's where um, photosynthesis is occurring. <clears throat> so cell wall and chloroplasts are differentiating the plant cell from the animal cell. Both of them have a membrane, however, and that's what I want to show you the structure of. Very important, this phospholipid structure. Uh, it's this molecule that makes up that structure and we summarize it by showing a little ball with two legs. Okay, uh, It's a huge simplification of this molecule here. So what part do I need you to know of that molecule? I need you to know that in this top part, in the head part, that's why we draw it like a little ball, in this head part is a phosphate so it's the atom phosphorus, the P in the middle, surrounded by four oxygens, and that's a phosphate. So who cares is the question. So we have a phosphate up at the top, and we're going to draw it like a ball. And then we have these two legs that are fats, right, uh, that we've looked at before. So these two chains here, attached onto the phosphate is what is the component of this membrane of both a plant cell and, and an animal cell. It's a really important molecule. And the reason it's so important is because it has a charge on one end of the molecule. So this ball-like end of the molecule has a negative charge. So tiny here, you probably can see it, little negative there. So this part is negative, and this part is a fat, so it's neutral. Correct? Keep that thought. So in describing this, I would say a phospholipid has two regions. Hydrophilic head. Hydro, water. Philic attracts water. And it attracts anything polar, which means anything that has a charge. So if this is negative, it's going to attract positive charges. The leg part are the hydrophobic tails, we're going to call them, and those are nonpolar because they're fatty, which means they have no charge, and they repel water. So hydro water phobic. Hydrophilic region, hydrophobic region of this miracle molecule that makes up every single cell of yours. So if you were to look at an individual cell, you would see that, this is a really nice diagram of that, because you see that the entire sphere is hundreds of these molecules. And if you enlarge this region here of the box, you would see that heads and tails and heads and tails, so the head is pointing to the outside of the cell, and the heads upside down here are pointing to the inside of the cell. Why would that matter? Why? Because the inside of your cells are full of water. Correct? So if they're full of water, you better have the end of the molecule that gets along with water pointing towards that section. 
However, the entire cell is also immersed in water. So on the outside is also water. Outside of the cell here also has to have the heads pointing to the outside so that water that is bathing the cell is going to get along with it and not repel it like oil and water would repel. So that leaves this middle section. This middle section that's labeled there for you is hydrophobic. So it is not water loving. That part repels anything that is water soluble. So it's like this fatty barrier around all your cells. It's not going to allow water soluble molecules in or out easily at all because it's got that fat barrier. Yet on the surface to the outside and on the surface to the inside, it's quite happy getting along with water. Other than phospholipids in the membrane, there are also immersed, do you notice, among this membrane, these purple molecules here that are proteins. So proteins are immersed inside those membranes of yours and all animal membranes. And um, what are their functions? So what they will do is they will transport proteins. They're, they, excuse me, they are transport proteins. They're able to transport substances that can't get through the membrane ordinarily. It'll allow them a passageway to do so. They sometimes serve as enzymes. Uh, they serve as recognition proteins, which means when you have another molecule that has to recognize that cell, it can do it via these proteins. Uh, there are also um, adhesion proteins, which means they will stick to a neighboring cell that also has that protein, so they're allowed to attach. And there are also receptors. Receptors are those that are going to receive a hormone, for example, an estrogen, and make that cell do something different, or testosterone. So it is the location where that cell will recognize a hormone. So these are all examples of proteins that are embedded in this phospholipid bilayer. The other thing we need to look at in cells is all these organelles, the little organs, because all of them have a very specific function. And I will not be going over those in a mini lecture. What I need you to do is look those up by yourself. They are ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, so on and so forth, through the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So I want you to look those up. Those are part of your vocab too, because you're expected to know what the function is. So know the name, what does it do? And that's all I need you to do for that. Okay, all these small organs. So that's the end of my second mini lecture on cells. Okay, see you soon.